An historic mayor, a love doctor, and a visit from the Prime Minister. Our Northeast Ontario Hub editor, Claude Sharma, has been busy this week. He joins us now from our studio at Laurentian University in Sudbury to explain. It's been a rough week politically for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He made a stop in Sudbury on Wednesday. What was the purpose of that visit? Well, Jay, and it was a real quick stop. He made a visit to the Mailey Extension Project, uh, something the Liberals have put money into. They announced this uh, back in 2016. Uh, they'll be dropping in uh, about $26, 27000000 million into the first phase of this project. So it's a big road project that uh, many would say Sudbury badly needs. Now, the mayor of Greater Sudbury, Brian Bigger, said this project has been 25 years in the making. Uh, what's the significance in this area for that project? So yes, and indeed it has been, and um, it's overall it's about a 120 million to 150 million dollar project. <coughs> and it's pretty much an east-west connection, uh, helping with the traffic, and, and a big thing too is making the roads safer. So a lot of these big trucks, uh, construction trucks, won't be on, on one of the main roads. Instead, it'll be spread out uh, on through the new roads as well. So a lot of it has to do with road safety and with uh, traffic congestion. Now, the multi-million dollar extension project was the backdrop of this photo op, but it wasn't at all what journalists wanted to ask him about. There was, of course, another topic that was top of mind for everyone, the situation with SNC-Lavalin and his former cabinet minister, Jody Wilson-Raybould. Now, we're going to take a deep dive into that controversy next Tuesday, but for now, here's what Trudeau had to say about it while in Sudbury. If anyone, uh, any minister, including the former Attorney General, uh, felt that there was, uh, that we were not living up to that standard, it was her responsibility to come and speak to me directly about that. She did not do that in the fall, uh, and uh, she accepted uh, a, another position in this government when I made the cabinet shot. So uh, we are uh, going to continue uh, to work hard to build a stronger economy and always respect the rule of law in this country. Clearly sticking to his message there, Claude. Did he say anything else worth noting on that issue? Well, he did answer three questions. Two had to do with that. Uh, he also uh, answered a question in regards to uh, infrastructure, uh, long-term water advisories on First Nation communities. And he said uh, his government back in 2016 set out to eliminate all the water advisories in Canada. Uh, it was about 150 or so. So he, he brought up that 78 uh, have been lifted, and now about um, 62 or so uh, left remaining, with a majority of them here in Ontario, especially uh, northern Ontario. And I spoke to uh, the First Nation chief of Serpent River, Elaine Johnson, and she said her First Nation community had to go under a, a water advisory lift, and uh, that happened in 2017. But it's more complicated than that. She said it took a lot of pressuring to the government. Uh, they had to find a consultant in the United States and get parts from all the way in Poland. So this is uh, a pretty complicated issue. And she says she spoke to some other First Nation leaders who said uh, some of these fixes that the government is doing is kind of more of a Band-Aid solution. So uh, it's not exactly what it seems so far, according to uh, this First Nation leader. OK, I want to switch gears to another political figure you covered this week in honor of Black History Month. You recently read the story of Dr. S.F. Monenstein, Canada's first black mayor. You also spoke to his family. What did you find most interesting about him and his life and that you think Ontarians ought to know? Well, there are so many things, but I mean, just think about it this way. I mean, here is a uh, doctor, so, sorry, a, a man from Haiti who finds home now in Canada and he ends up in, in Madawa. So a, a black Haitian doctor sets up a practice in Madawa and he marries a Russian refugee, Zena, who came over uh, because... Uh, Europe, it was war torn back uh, in the 50s from Russia, and, and met uh, Dr. St. Philemon Monestim uh, in all places of Ottawa, and they relocated to, to Mattawa. They had a family of four. So you don't exactly hear that too often. A black Haitian man and a, a white Russian woman marrying in the 50s in a northeastern Ontario community. So I, I find that very fascinating and the whole uh, dynamic of the family. What is the lasting legacy he left behind in Ontario? I think that all depends on who you ask, but a number of people would say uh, the Algonquin Nursing Home. Uh, shortly before he died, that was one of his big projects. He got to see it open. Uh, there was a big need in the North Bay, Mattawa area uh, for that Algonquin Nursing Home, which his, uh, his wife and his daughter Vala worked at. 
and it's still open to today. And another thing too, just breaking those barriers, those color barriers. Uh, I spoke to uh, several people who uh, back in the, the 50s and 60s, they were little kids and he was their family doctor. He'd make night calls uh, to their houses. Uh, at all hours in the morning. And, and one gentleman told me that, you know what, he made such an impact on their lives that he was this black man that they saw for the first time, a black person in person. And uh, they're used to seeing them on TV. And he was saying, when they were playing in the playground because of uh, St. Philemon Monastin, that they wanted to be the black doctor. They wanted to be Muhammad Ali. They wanted to be Sidney Poitier because he made that much of an impression on them. Now, there's another subject that you studied this week, subject of love. Uh, I don't know if that was in preparation for Valentine's Day that just passed, I imagine, but uh, tell me about the, the love class that you got to sit in and what uh, students got out of it. So earlier this week, I sat in on a class, uh, part of the Ideas of Love 2 program, which is taught at Thornhill, Thornhill University, part of Laurent University. And kind of the topic of the week was romantic love. So the students got to explore uh, what the, the course is based on is readings from uh, C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis is most known for writing the Chronicles of Narnia, a British novelist, but he also wrote extensively about love. So these students have um, kind of a critical way of thinking about love, and, it, and love is so much more deeper than uh, I love you. So these students get to write essays on a number of different topics of love, and it's much more extensive than just kind of that, my heart and I love you. Uh, what else did uh, the professor teach you about love? Well, just kind of how, how many different types of love there are. And, and for the students too, they, they said that they came away with such a better understanding of love. Uh, it's, it's no longer to them just an emotion. Um, and there are so many different ways to describe it. I mean, uh, you love your country, you, the, the love of your animals, the love of your friend, uh, friendship love versus romantic love. There are so many different types of love and they're analyzed at such a scholarly level uh, in this program. And I found that kind of eye-opening. For me, I just thought like, ah, what's this gonna be about? But it, it was, it's very extensive. And uh, I, I did learn a lot about love. I'm curious to know, February 14th in Canada, how does it, uh, that's Valentine's Day for us, how does it differ or how's it celebrated in Finland, which is where Dr. Love is from? Well, Dr. Love, Jason Lepovari is from Finland. And he, uh, he got that, that nickname, which he likes, but he said it's, it's kind of a, a joking fun. But he says, although he's Dr. Love, he appreciates the way Valentine's Day is celebrated in Finland. And it's called there on this exact same day, well, February 14th, it's called Friendship Day. And he kind of likes it better because everyone can participate in it, even if you don't have a lover. Uh, it's friends being friends. You can give chocolates to friends. You can do whatever you want. Everybody uh, is available to celebrate in it. If you're alone, no big deal. You got a friend out there for you, unlike here. And he says here, Valentine's Day is a little bit more commercialized compared to Friendship Day. I'm hoping we can celebrate Friendship Day, so I'm looking forward to some chocolates or any baked goods. You can send it my way. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Claude. It's been a busy week for you. I look forward Thank to you. checking in with you next time around. That's Claude Sharma, our Northeastern Ontario Hub Editor. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.